Welcome to readtheticker.com. Today we're going to talk about is how to find the Hearst dominant cycle. To do this we will use the analysis chart. We'll also use the SPY or the ETF for the S&P 500. We're also going to do this up to a preset date, February the 8th 2010. We're going to scan data before the dotted line to see the effects so we can forecast the future after the dotted line. Let's go and find our cycles. Scroll down to select the cycle finder spectrum. Okay. The default symbol is SPY. The default date is the last date of that symbol. If you're loading in another symbol, you'll be loading in QQ, for example the Q's symbol there, any date you wish. At the moment we're using SPY and a preset date. Okay, let's just understand the chart we see below here. We have amplitude here cycle period down the bottom and statistic measurements between 0 and 100 here. The cycle period at the moment is 0 to 150 which is represented from the max cycle count. Here we are here, cycle is 150. Now the amplitude is measured on each cycle. The higher the amplitude the more dominant the cycle. The red line highlights the most dominant cycle. Okay. You may have you may have a high cycle but it might have a low bar tails. The red line is the bar tails measurement. The lower the bar tails, the more significant the cycle that it is not random. These cycles can be random and have no relevance to the underlying data. What this calculation does is calculate the sine wave cycle and measure it to the underlying data. Where the measurement of the data and the cycle is very close, we get a low bar tells, thus a low error rate. So really, anything under 10% is um, excellent for bar tells. What you're trying to find is a is something like this, where you've got a low bar tells and a high amplitude or dominant cycle. So you want a marriage of, of these two lines and this amplitude. The other data set is the um, performance of the cycle. For example here we have a dash line which is wind count. So for example if you um, had um, three trades of a cycle from peak to trough and you had a win, win and loss, that wind count would be 66 so it's 2 divided by 3. The dotted line is the win point, so instead of taking a win loss count, you'd be taking the measurement of points moved on the chart. So if you had a win of 20 points, and a loss of 5 and a loss of 5, that would be 20 over 30, so it would be 66%. So in this particular bar here, for that cycle, the win loss, the win -loss uh, percentage is the dash there, and the win loss count is up there. So really what you want? Let's go over it. You want a low bar tail score. You want high amplitude. And if at all possible, you want high um, win count and win percentages. That means the um, it's a very successful cycle for trading. Okay. The other thing you have to realize is the data sample size. We have 150 cycles. We have our multiple here. So what we do is we take 150 times 5 to give our data sample size of 750. This is about, if a year is 260 trading days, this represents about 3 years. The total number of days available, this is daily, is 4,500. So that's as far as we can go for our study of our cycles. Um, this shows us the last date of a data set. Okay. This one is scanned on the current setting up to the 2nd, the 8th, 2010, without really any adjustments. 
Okay, we're still looking at daily data. Second, the eighth turns up here. 150 cycles. We're using a data sample of 750, which is nearly close to three years. So really, what are we looking at? We're looking at here, going back one, two, three years, looking at that data to find the cycles. I'd like to further explain the table below the chart. Here we have a list of cycle periods that represent the red bars on the chart. We also have the data relating to those red bars. We have the bar tails value, the win-loss count, win-loss points, and average win points, which is just the division of those two numbers there. Okay, let's push the limits a bit. Let's select a max cycles of 500 and a data set of 10. So we're going to ask for a 5,000 sample size, but we only have 4,208. Just want to show you what happens. Whoops, looks like we don't have enough data. So what we have to do is we have to roll back our selection size, roll it back to 8, run the scan. Okay. What we've done here is we have scanned 500 cycle periods in the data in a data size of 4,000 daily da data points. And obviously 500 into 4 is only 8, so we not, don't really have a large data sample to go and find cycles of 500 or so. But as you can see here, three, this daily cycle size of 326 and 389 are quite prominent in the small data size. We even get some um, impressive readings on our uh, daily cycle significance report. In red, the, these are color coded to represent um, significant bar tail cycles value. So the red, we've got a rep um, reading under five. Oh, I'm sorry, under three, I think it is. No, no, it's even under, I think it's under two and a half. That's it, two and a half. This is under um, seven, and this is under 12. Different color coatings. Ideally, you want to see red and blue. I look at Bartel's values under 10%. See, so here we see 88 and 65 for a dominant over the uh, dominant cycles over a, a very long period of time. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put up here our manual entries 88. And 65. Putting in a, a cycle period up here forces the software, the calculation, to report the results down here. So we, we've, we've done the wide scan to see what's out there. As you can see it's pretty volatile down here and there's a, a lot of mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit closer to the data. We're going to scroll down to a, 100. We'll put in say 10. Okay, so here we've got a thousand data points, which is four years, which is still too large. Here, the cycle of 65 doesn't mean much because it's got a high bar tails value. We want a low bar tails value. The 88 is a bit more prominent. 83 comes into um, more of a, get more of attention. So if we go down here, we see our 65 and our 88. We've got the word man, which represents manual. That's because we've loaded it up here. The blue dots represent the cycle periods up here that we wanted to focus on manually. Okay, so it's still a bit too far out. So I'm going to get in real close, about a year. So let's go in three, leave it like that, see what happens. Okay, so here we have um, cycle period of 84. It's got a bar tails of 9.9. .9. A 61 comes in at 16. We've got a 1 at 29, which is um, 11. So 84. Okay, it's 84. Let's have a look at that. Go a little bit wider. Ooh. Uh, 
Vartel swings out of it. Let's go back a bit. Three and get a little really close. Mm. So anything that looks like the cycle has anything between um, 70 and 80. Seventy-two, okay. Because we're only looking at the when I got two seventy, we're only looking at the past year's data. So that's because the volatility in the underlying can change quite a bit. We know there's a dominant cycle over a long period of time around eighty-eight. But we're just trying to sharpen our our, um, our focus a bit and see how it looks. Okay. So let's go back to the um, chart and put it in. What do we decide on? We'll, we'll try 84. I think the other number was um, 72. We'll try both of them. 72 percent is chart height. We built the chart. Okay. What we're looking for is a, a nice swinging sine wave where it's not swinging so attractively that means the uh, underlying price value is not conforming with the cycle so the more traditional sine wave cycle you see the more dominant the cycle is and more well behaving it is here you see um, price is interrupting the cycle flow so therefore it has less value because this sine wave is filtered by price as you can see here, the blue line's not bad. It starts to lose a bit of form here. Like we don't know. We're not supposed to know what's going to happen out on this, um, beyond this date here. We're not supposed to know what's going to happen out here. So, on this, I would have, I think, I'd be looking at the cycle of '84. Okay. Let's have a look at this. We've got a peak, trough, peak, trough, peak, trough. Okay. Let's have a look at the troughs again. Troughs, trough, 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 trough. So at the moment you have to be pretty excited when you see some bottoms coming in on the on the troughs. Okay. So there we have it. Our cycle finder spectrum helped us find our dominant cycle. Thanks for watching.